Since its discovery in the early 1980s, the transforming growth factor beta, abbreviated TGF-beta, signaling pathway has been recognized as a key regulator for fibrosis, immune responses, and angiogenesis. TGF-beta plays an important role in tumorigenesis and contributes to the hallmarks of cancer, including tumor proliferation, invasion, and metastasis, inflammation, neoangiogenesis, and escape of immune surveillance. More recently, TGF-beta signaling was found to enhance epithelial mesenchymal transition, and its presence is associated with several tumors of mesenchymal phenotype. Based on these observations in general pathophysiology and in cancer specifically, several pharmacological approaches to block TGF-beta signaling have been explored, such as monoclonal antibodies, vaccines, antisense oligonucleotides, and small molecule inhibitors. Galunacertib, or LY2157299 monohydrate, is an oral small molecule inhibitor of the TGF-beta receptor 1 kinase, also referred to as ALK5, that specifically downregulates the phosphorylation of SMAD2, abrogating activation of the canonical activation pathway. The ALK5 inhibitor has anti-tumor activity in tumor-bearing animal models such as breast, colon, and lung cancers and hepatocellular carcinoma. Like many other small molecule inhibitors of ALK5, continuous long-term exposure to galunacertib cause cardiac toxicities in animals, including changes in the heart valves and formation of aneurysms of the ascending aorta or aortic arch. These findings in animals were a significant hurdle in the identification of galunacertib as a clinical candidate which would be safe in patients. Here we describe how such a molecule was identified in galunacertib. We highlight the importance of using a pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic-based dosing strategy to define a therapeutic window for the clinical investigation of galunacertib, resulting in an intermittent dosing regimen of 14 days on, 14 days off, on a 28-day cycle for all ongoing galunacertib trials. Today, galunacertib is being investigated as monotherapy and in combination with anti-tumor regimens, including nivolumab, in cancer patients with high unmet medical needs, such as glioblastoma, pancreatic cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, and myelodysplastic syndrome. Using central echocardiography and Doppler imaging, electrocardiograms, serial assessment of cardiac markers, BNP and troponin-1, chest computerized tomography for detection of aneurysms, and standard cardiovascular monitoring, so far we have not observed galunacertib-induced cardiac toxicities in over 300 patients. The responses seen in patients with glioblastoma and the long-term treatment in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma suggested that the dosing regimen was not only safe, but also has potential anti-tumor efficacy. While these initial observations were interesting, identifying patients who will benefit from most from the TGF-beta signaling inhibition remains elusive.